Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video we're going to take a look at Bobby Parker's seminal 1961 R&B number, Watch Your Step. And by R&B we mean early rock and roll really, not that ooh thing from the 80s. Um, this was recommended to me by one of my viewers and I'm going to demonstrate the basic groove as I hear it anyway from this song. It's a kind of fake mambo, uh, as I would call it. And uh, if you like this and you're interested in hearing a bit more, let me know in the comments and I might make another video giving some insight into some of the variations and fills that you can play. But in this video, we're just going to look at the main beat. Uh, as I said, it's a kind of fake mambo thing. The track was inspired by What I Say by Ray Charles and by Manteca by Dizzy Gillespie. Bobby Parker apparently was playing around with the riff and decided to turn it into a blues, according to Wikipedia anyway. Um, so let's take a listen to how, how this sounds when it's all moving along. I'm going to give myself a fine for inappropriate crashing. That's the essence of the thing. So let's look at the components that make this up and see how we can put the groove together one step at a time. We think about the tempo is about 180 BPM, as far as I assessed. Um, and we're going to be counting one and two and three and four and eighth notes. And with the feet, we're going to be playing a samba pattern, meaning the bass drum is going to be going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and so on and so on. And I'm going to play the hi-hat on the two and four. I don't know if that's happening in the record. I, I sort of feel it is, but it's hard to tell with my mushed up ears and uh, old fashioned recording technology as it was. But I would go for that anyway uh, when I'm playing a thing like this. So the bass drum pattern On the ride, we're going to be playing the bell, I think with the tip of the stick sounds about right, but if you want a bit more bite and aggression, you can play it with, a, with the shoulder of the stick there. Um, but we're going to play one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Now, if you're not used to coordinating that, spend as long as you like just to get yourself really, really comfortable before moving on to the next step. I don't think there's any need to sort of rush through these things. So if you haven't encountered a pattern like this before, take it slow and easy and, and play that combination, just the ride, the hi-hat foot and the bass drum until it feels reasonably relaxed. Don't be too hard on yourself, but take your time with it. Now, we're going to play acrostic. Oh, I forgot to mention, when we play this, we're going to keep our snares off. There's no, there's no snare in this track, or it's, it's an off snare anyway, and, and gives you a certain uh, option for sounds, you know, sort of Latin-y sounding, if you like. So you, you can do it snares off. Not that there's anything wrong with playing it with the snares on, but we're going to play acrostic, and we're going to play the acrostic on the two. So that's what we're going to add here to our ride bass drum hi-hat pattern. Okay, same, same, keep that going until you feel really comfortable with it. And while you're doing that, you know, make sure you're getting a nice cross stick sound. Uh, you don't have to play with the stick this way round, but 
it sure helps. In most cases, it makes acrostic sound good. So, um, where, where I'm playing an acrostic dominant song, shall we say, I'll definitely keep my stick this way. Sometimes I might keep the stick this way if I'm only playing acrostic a little bit and I want to hear the normal stick tip sound the rest of the time. But this is good stuff. Now, the, the little tom thing happens on the for and the and. So this kind of coincides with the uh, last note of the three ride pattern, uh, three ride notes or whatever. Ugh, I wish I could say that more articulately. It'll coincide with the last note of the ride pattern and then with the, the gap in between the three notes. So if we have one and two, three and four, uh, it'll be four and, right? So it's kind of an overlapping pattern. So to get a feel for that, you might want to abandon the other limbs, just focus on your two hands. In addition to that, when we add that in to the multi-limbed activity that we're about to do, uh, you might even start just playing the, um, the tom note that's coincident with the last of the, the ride. So, so on the four, one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four, and then add the following one once you got used to that. It's always good to piece things together slowly, in my opinion. So let's do it with just a single tom note on the four, which will be, the, again, the last of the group of three cymbal notes. And uh, once that's going nicely, we're going to drop the extra one in slowly, slowly. Are we feeling good with that? Let's now combine the cross stick on the two and the tom tom on the four and the and of four. And that's it, there you have it. I'll include a little groove scribe type transcription, not type, an actual groove scribe transcription in the description box below to help you follow the whole thing. Um, but that's the main groove. Learn it so your body knows how to do it automatically and then try and bring the tempo up. Uh, it's a little bit challenging for some people maybe, depending on where you are with your drumming, but it's quite an achievable thing to play and it, it sounds really cool. Anyway, that will be that. Don't forget to give me a like, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. If you want some drum lessons and you think I might be able to help you in a one-on-one -on -one setting, I'm available, I'm a drum teacher. Wherever you are in the world, we can book a Zoom, uh, Skype or whatever you prefer. And uh, I can see about helping you out with your drumming goals, aims, aspirations, needs and desires. Um, but in the meantime, off you go and practice. <laughs>